Welcome to Overwatch, Evolving the Art. Welcome everyone to the evolution of art for Overwatch 2. I'm Bill Petras, Senior Art Director. I'm Arnold Sang, the Assistant Art Director. And I'm John LaFleur, the Technical Director. So we hope you're having a great BlizzCon today. Our team has been working really hard and we're really excited to share with you some of the ideas and sort of, uh, I would say, special moments during the development of the Overwatch 2 art style. So first of all, what we're really going to talk about is probably our biggest inspiration, and that is the original Overwatch art style. And in that art style, we wanted to retain these values of strong silhouettes in the characters, a bright, beautiful world, a great sense of color. We were hugely inspired by the original Overwatch in that way. Also, we want to create more enhanced look for these heroes, which Arn and John are going to talk about in a little bit. Also, we want to create a much more, I would say, in-depth, thematic feeling in the world, much more areas to explore than the original Overwatch. And finally, we're going to talk about the dynamic world and, and how much more believable and alive this world is. And along with that, the technology as well and how that supports it. So that being said, Arn, take it away. All right, so with Overwatch 2, uh, we've, we're setting out to redefine a sequel. And what, what does it mean to make a sequel for Overwatch? Um, Overwatch has always been about its heroes. So for Overwatch 2, we wanted to make sure that our heroes could have a fresh new look. Um, uh, and, but at the same time, we wanted to make sure that these iconic heroes were still the ones that you remember from the classic Overwatch. So, uh, you know, Jeff likes to use Batman as an example. Um, but I think super, superheroes are actually a really great example and look into how we approach this whole process. Um, you know, superhero movies like Iron Man is a good example that I like to use. You watch Iron Man 1 and he's got, you know, the classic armor. Um, and then Iron Man 2, suddenly like, oh, it's a triangle instead of a circle. And if you play close attention, all the little details are a little bit different. And as an artist, I really geek out on that stuff. And that's something we wanted to have Overwatch as well. You know, Tracer, our classic hero, how could we take her, find elements that are, you know, keep the spirit of the original design, and while explaining a little bit about how these characters, where, where are they in the story of Overwatch? So we took a different approach for every hero. You know, you see Winston up there. Um, you know, he orchestrated the recall, got everybody back together. He, but he's got a, a couple of few up, upgrades. You know, he's one of our most iconic characters. So we didn't want to change him too much, but if you look closely, his armor's a little sleeker, his backpack's a little more techy. You know, he's got a little bit, a, a little console <laughs> yep, yep. To, to call on the heroes and you know, coordinate the attacks. Um, we also have Mei. It's been a long time since, you know, May, uh, or it's, it's been a long way from Antarctica. I think she walked uh, all the way. Yeah. Yeah. She walked or she took the bus, I don't know. <laughs> Um, but is, is, she's a long way from, from being, a, being a scientist, from being a climatologist. And that first moment she, um, you know, she's on that dropship with Winston and Tracer overlooking Paris. We wanted to make sure that she was ready for battle. So we gave her a couple upgrades, you know, made her suit a little bit more techy, a little bit sleeker. And at, show, at the same time, it allows us to show off some of the cool tech that you guys are working on. Um, but one of my favorites is Genji. Uh, as you guys saw in, in the... Announcement cinematic that we showed yesterday, zero hour. I can't you know, get enough. I, I can just watch that over and over. And I still remember the very first time that you know, Ben Dai and the story and franchise group came over and showed us the storyboards. And even in the very, very beginning, the storyboards had that moment of Genji coming out and deflecting those shots. And it was the coolest moment ever. And it has always, like, every time that moment comes up, whether it's from storyboards or watching the final version yesterday with everybody, like, I get goosebumps. And funny enough, in the storyboard, they had given him a hoodie. And he kind of comes out and takes out the hoodie, oh, it's Genji. Um, but at the time, it was like, he was only wearing a hoodie. He didn't have pants on. And we <laughs> so we didn't, we didn't realize that, you know, Genji wasn't actually naked this whole time. So we're like, 
If he's going to wear a hoodie, he probably should put some pants on as well. <laughs> probably, probably. Um, so Zhang Ah Li, a talented concept artist from the Story and Franchise group, um, took that idea, fleshed out a concept, um, you know, a design that we liked so much that we took that and we adopted that as Genji's new look. And we have a lot of cool uh, new looks to talk about today. Um, here is an awesome image by one of our artists, uh, Ness Kane, kind of illustrating, um, you know, Brigitte and Reinhardt arriving at Watchpoint Gibraltar after the attack on Paris. And Brigitte, you know, she's been with Reinhardt for a long time now. They've been in many battles together. And Reinhardt, you know, he get, likes to get in a lot of trouble. He does. And his armor gets dinged up all the time, and Brigitte is always constantly upgrading, upgrading. But it wasn't until they got to Watchpoint Gibraltar that, you know, now she has Winston's help. And, you know, together they come up with Reinhardt's, you know, new armor. And she sprinkles a little bit more personality, of her own personality in there as well, which is really cool. <clears throat> um, we have a lot of cool new, um, new looks for the characters to, for you guys to check out. Um, in our demos, if you guys have played Toronto and Rio de Janeiro, you can select some of these cool heroes. Uh, we also have a sneak peek that you guys saw yesterday of Torbjorn and Bastion. Um, just, you know, still in the concept phase, but shows a little bit about where they are in their story. You know, Torbjorn, you know, he chose not to answer Winston's recall. Um, he chose to, you know, stay at home and tinker around with his gadgets, so he's a little bit more casual, wearing something you might see him wear in his own garage or in his workshop. Um, but then, you know, Bastion's now with him, and together they kind of upgrade the tech side a little bit. Uh, and, you know, Bastion even wore, uh, borrowed, borrowed Torbjorn's hat. Yeah, I love that hat, but... Um... One of the things I really like is that 09 on, uh, on, you can see on Reinhardt there. Yeah, so if you guys notice, look closely, like, Reinhardt has this 09 on his shoulder pad, and um, if you guys paid attention to the original Reinhardt design from Overwatch, he has an 08 on there. So this is like the ninth iteration. Brigitte's really taking him to the next level. But there's a deeper story behind that, that number, and it, it makes me think back on Project Titan, actually, which, you know, we were all a part of as well. Yes. Um, back on Project Titan, there was a character called the Juggernaut, um, which was this big, you know, burly, armored character. And we went through iteration after iteration on the Juggernaut designs. And by the time we got to the eighth design, that was Reinhardt. You know, we, we had rebooted the team, and the project was now Overwatch. But we wanted to carry some of that legacy, all that stuff we learned from working on the Juggernaut into Reinhardt. So, you know, Brigitte is now helping us carry that legacy forward as well with the 09 version of Reinhardt's armor. Um, and funny enough, this version actually uh, artistically is a little bit inspired by some of those early versions back on Project Titan. So. Um, but we wanted to dive a little bit deeper into one of the character's designs and really walk you through the process of what we were thinking about as we were designing these new looks. So Tracer, she's our, you know, she's our one of the most important characters, if not the imp most important characters in Overwatch. So when we're thinking of the new looks, if we could do something for Tracer, maybe we can carry that philosophy forward for all of our heroes. And like I mentioned, we always want to take things that are iconic to the characters and preserve those. For Tracer, we identify that as, uh, one, her colors. So Tracer's colors are very iconic, not only for her character, but also for Overwatch as, as a whole, you know, Overwatch uh, you know, the, the white armor, the orange tights also happen to be the colors of Overwatch, the game. So uh, we wanted to preserve that. Mm. We also wanted to pres preserve her silhouette. So Tracer is immediately recognizable with her spiky hair, um, you know, her popped up collar, and the way that her, her, her sleeves are folded up, and down to her sleek tights and running shoes. So silhouette is a really important thing for us as well. Yeah, and even from the gameplay and the tech side, silhouettes something that we don't want to break too much of because the, the hitboxes are something you want to keep as sort of what you see is what you hit for the player. So we want to make sure that that silhouette fits fairly close to the hitbox, even with the new looks. Yeah, we learned a lot from making skins for the original Overwatch, and we carried some of that knowledge when approaching these new looks. Uh, but from there, we were, we were thinking, okay, so what are some things we can change about Tracer? What are some things we can take and maybe push to the next level, and maybe at the same time highlight some of the cool tech that we have um, you know, from the engineering side. And we thought, original Tracer, she's kind of a mix of a couple of themes. She's got this, um, you know, this uh, athletic look to her that you know, looks like she's always on the run, but she's, always, she's also a, you know, a former test pilot, 
So we gave her the flight jacket, you know, with the worn leather, the wool, uh, the, the wool collar, and also, you know, the, the, the flight harness with the cool retro patches. We thought that was a really cool look for original Tracer. It was a very retro look. And we thought if we took that retro look and we pushed it to the next level, evolved it a little bit, maybe that would be an angle into how we can approach leveling Tracer up. So with, with all that, um, you know, we, we dived right into ideation. So this is a stage of concept where we take our initial philosophy and we try it out with different iterations. So with the first one, A, on the, on the far left you see there, if you squint your eyes, her silhouette really doesn't change much. It's really, you know, like, what, like we said, the collar is still there, the sleeves. It's really the internal details that have shifted a little bit. You know, some of the patterns are different, and we're thinking, okay, maybe some of the materials on her jacket might be different. But at first glance, maybe it's a little bit too conservative. Um, so we thought, okay, let's try a couple more where we push it a little bit more. Um, with B and C, we were thinking, okay, let's, let's take that athletic look that we like from Tracer and really take that to the next step. So she gets a little bit more casual here. We start breaking the silhouette um, that, you know, really carefully. Um, the jacket with, with B gets a little bit, you know, uh, more poofy at the, at the bottom. And we're thinking maybe even her chronal harness maybe could reduce a little bit in size. We imagine, like, okay, maybe this is Tracer after Overwatch has been shut down and she's maybe walking down the streets of King's Row. She, she, doesn't, she doesn't need all of that juice, all of that energy from her chronal harness that you, she uses in battle. Maybe she, she has a slightly more reduced version. And we took that even to another step with C, uh, you know, elaborating more on, like, hey, what are some different silhouettes we can play with on the jacket? Maybe there's a cool poncho look which I personally really liked. It gave her a really hip kind of look. Um, but then we were thinking, okay, wait a minute. If we're taking Tracer, like these iterations of Tracer, putting her on that dropship on the way to Paris, and, you know, the city's under attack, May and Winston are ready for battle, and she looks like, you know, she's just, you know, she's going out for a stroll or something like that, there's a little bit of a disconnect. So, okay, let's, let's get her battle ready. Um, you know, Winston probably prepped up both May and Tracer and himself, to go into the battle. So with the last iteration on D, we tried to take more of a sci-fi techie approach. Mm. What, what if we, she was just like, this is a, a cool updated version of battle armor for Tracer. And that's kind of really where we landed. Uh, we really liked this version of Tracer, but there were things that I think during the exploration that we liked as well. So we took all of those elements and we kind of combined it. And this is the final concept for the new look for Tracer. So with this new look, um, well, this is the final concept. It's really only the beginning in bringing these characters to life in, in Overwatch 2. From there, it really goes to our talented character artists, artists and engineers to bring Tracer to life inside the engine. So here's a look at Tracer, um, the new look for Tracer in Overwatch 2. And one of the things that I think of when I look at this, this screenshot here is um, if you guys are familiar with Overwatch, you've probably seen the lobby screen, you know, the, the main menu screen where you see Tracer with her hands on her hips, and you kind of see her from the thighs or the, you know, the waist up. And she looks great in Overwatch 1. With Overwatch 2, because we wanted to tell more story, we wanted to get more intimate with the characters. Mm. I still remember the moment where Jeremy Craig, one of the designers who used to be on the team, um, he worked really closely with the UI, and he just took that camera on that UI screen and he zoomed it right into Tracer. And he was like, how close can we get? I, was, I, I think that was a, a really inspirational moment, actually, too. Because when Jeremy did that, we, we seen Tracer in this brand new close-up look. And we were all huddled around the computer looking at him with everybody. And we're like, yes, we want to do this. And John on the tech side, can we do this, John? Yeah, well, when we looked at it from the technical perspective, we thought, yeah, that's it's really inspirational, but, but also perspirational because it's going to be a lot of work. So we, uh, if you look at that, that image, it's so much more detail there that, that you need to really make that character stand out. And luckily, we have a great, very talented team that, that works on these uh, heroes. And uh, Renaud Galan, our uh, lead character modeler, and on the engineering side, we have Bruce Wilkie and Marco Alamia, who, who have worked tirelessly to get the character to where it is. Um, it involved revamping not just the, the uh, materials, but also the shaders we use to render and, and the geometry for the character. 
Yeah, so if you guys have checked out our new website on, on playoverwatch.com, you can see a comparison between the old, uh, uh, the classic looks and the new looks. And it really gives you a sense of how the outfits changed. But today, we really want to get in closer and really show you, um, when you get up close to Tracer, the difference between, you know, um, tr Tracer from original Overwatch to Overwatch 2. Um, and when you get to this, th this level, you can really see the technology upgrades that, that we have um, for this new game. And one of the things that jumps out at me first is the hair. If you look at Tracer's hair from the original Overwatch, you'll notice, you know, we designed it for, for you know, in, in the game, she's, move, she's moving really quickly. You see her from a certain distance, and it really does a good job of bringing out the silhouette that we talked about and popping the highlights. But when you zoom in, it kind of really breaks down in the sense that it doesn't feel very natural. There might be a little bit of a plasticky look to it. So, and as always, we always aspire um, to, to when, we, when we watch the animated shorts that our story and franchise development team does, to have that level of fidelity that we have in the animated shorts. And for hair, that was one of our inspirations. Like, how can we get that natural looking feel? Yeah, and it definitely, it plays off, I'm sorry if I'm turning around, our monitors are off, but it definitely plays off as much softer if you, if you look at it in comparison to our original Overwatch. Um, and you can also see a lot of the detail in shadows. There's uh, much more detail in the shadows around the, the face. Um, and then there's some detail maps that we use to, to bring out the, the freckles on, on uh, oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> some uh, detail maps we use to bring out the freckles on the face. And, and even with some of the heroes, you can see the pores. So probably our heroes are going to get a little bit subconscious about how <laughs> close we're zooming in on them. But, uh, but yeah, and then, and then if you look at the eyes, we actually have new geometry for the eyes as well as shaders and that allows us to get much more expression as Arn was mentioning it's really important for the story mode and then here in the vest you can see where the detail maps kind of play off in the inside of the vest and then even off of, on the sleeves there you get much more detail but then we look at the skin the skin is uh, you can read much more out of the skin for the, from the lighting and the uh, environment yeah the skin shader I still remember the first time I was, I was looking over Renault's shoulder when he, he was like hey come check this out I got something new to show you and he turns on the new skin shader for the first time, and all the heroes just, there's this level of, um, of believability, and this felt so much more alive and, and real, and it was, it was really amazing to see it for the first time. Now, now, when you guys are talking about shaders, <laughs> for some of the people here that might not know what a shader is. That's not you, Billy. It's is not it? me, but yeah. could you enlighten us? Uh, yeah, a shader is, is um, a special program that we send down to the graphics hardware, and that enables us to uh, render each of the different materials on the jacket and the, and the face and in the eyes in, in a very special way. So um, a lot of the effects that you get from the hair and the eyes and the way that it, it, it uh, reflects light differently, that's all specified in those shader programs. So next we're going to show a video that shows off some of the heroes in Overwatch 2. You might have seen this yesterday in some of the panels, and this is personally my favorite way to just look at all of these new looks for the heroes and, and, and the tech. And I just want to give a shout out to um, talent members of our team, Dion Rogers doing the lighting for this, Ryan Denniston on the anima animation and posing, and our VFX team for tying it all together. Um, it, it really gives a good look at how these heroes come to life in the game. Wow. Thank you, guys. That was good. It was hard to follow up. <laughs> so as, as, as Arn and John are talking about the, the new enhanced heroes for Overwatch 2, let's talk about the environment. Let's talk about what's new in the Overwatch 2 world. So the environmental team, led by Dion Rogers and his group, uh, were very excited. And we want to share with you some of the uh, inner workings of what's going on and, and, and some bullet points on some of our values that became Overwatch 2 uh, for the environment. So for us, we're, we're very passionate about creating even more locations from around the world, many more places 
globally that we can travel to for Overwatch 2. We also want to create even more memorable themes um, in Overwatch 2. Uh, for us, um, it's sort of a passion uh, for the player to experience all these new, uh, I would say, feelings and, and new colors and experiences. For me personally, uh, looking back on the original WoW, which, which I had the privilege of being the art director on, one of the, the, the fond uh, memories I have in working with that team was uh, there was uh, a zone in Azeroth, a couple of them. It was like Duskwood, uh, Elwyn, um, and Westfall. And, and those three zones really inspired just my imagination and what world building could do to tell story for the player. And we wanted to take all those things we learned and, and bring them on to Overwatch 2 as well. And, and also, we want to create a more dynamic world in Overwatch 2. Uh, Arn always talks about how the heroes, it's all about motion and being dynamic. You know, when you do... Uh, we want to carry that over into the world itself. So a much more, uh, I would say, a live world uh, with many more uh, interactive elements in the world too. Let's take a look at a video of some of the latest maps, too, that we're working on. Here's Gothenburg. Iron, uh, this is where uh, uh, Torbjorn has his workshop. Toronto, a blizzard burst. Woo! Monte Carlo. There's a race car there for you, Johnny, too. Thank you. John loves racing. Uh, the club, Lucio's club um, in Rio de Janeiro. The Omnic ship, also in Rio. That's very dynamic, really. Very dynamic. We hope you guys are really enjoying this demo on the floor, too. Please let us know any feedback as well. We'd love to hear it. So, um, so Billy, for... Yes, John. For those of us that aren't artistically inclined, can you explain to us what theming is? I, I, I can certainly try. I can certainly try. So when, in context of environmental theming uh, that I was describing, all it really is is, is creating uh, a memorable mood or a feeling that you have as you explore through this, this environment. And these concepts are an example done by uh, Patrick Fallwetter, um, a talented concept artist that works on Overwatch 2. And these buildings are all from Toronto, and the one on the far right there is this brown kind of classic building, and the bottom's kind of teched up. And that might be in one area of the map in Toronto, but in the other area there might be a more like futuristic design, like the building in the middle. And even color, like the blue building on the far left, actually has a different look or feel. So these are ideas and theming that we try to develop for the player as we, as we build these maps around the world. Another example, Temple of Anubis. I'm, I'm sure people are familiar with this. 2014, BlizzCon. Five BlizzCon. years ago, we announced. In our first map. Yep. Arn's favorite. Yeah, one of my favorites. So on this map, actually, the values of Overwatch, the original Overwatch, we still really follow. Like, we love to have, you know, great silhouettes. We like to have strong themes in there. But as you look at this, it's sort of all the same theme. It has this sandy, sort of ancient kind of feeling to it. It was very unique. Yeah, I think it really reminds me of when we were designing the art style guide for the original Overwatch. We had this theory where maybe if we had like the environments as a wash of color, you know, for example, our first map, Temple of Anubis, a wash of gold, golden sand. Yes. Hanamura would be like pink and maybe um, King's Row, you know, dark blue that we had this theory that the characters, if we made them vibrant enough, would just pop out, you know, all, all in, the, in, in the name of readability, which is always very important to us. And then our visual effects and UI on top of that would have this layering effect. And, you know, we're thinking, yeah, the environments, they could just be one color and recede to the background. And I, I think there are, there are certain things that really worked um, in, in that way for Temple of Manubis, and that, that's why it's still one of my favorite maps. Yeah, and I, uh, the interesting thing from a technical perspective is that that sort of wash of color, that almost singular theme that we have, to us it, it, it means that we, I mean, tech, the themes to us means more 
textures, it means more models. So that means more memory. And one of the values we had on Overwatch was we wanted to encourage the players to switch heroes at any moment. So we wanted to be able to leave a lot of those streaming off of the hard drive to the heroes. So if I switch a hero, I want it to be able to pop in pretty quickly. So what we did was we said, well, we're going we're gonna to keep all of the map memory um, resident the whole time. And that meant that uh, with the singular themes, it was much easier for us. So less themes equals less memory. So just to make things a little hard for John and his team. Yeah, I see a lot more themes there. We added a lot more themes. So in Overwatch 2, for example, on Rio de Janeiro, which I hope you guys are enjoying on the floor outside, um, there's a lot more themes out there. We have you know, still that wash of color that Arnold's talking about, but we'll have a blue wash inside the Omnic ship or that golden dawn of a, of, a, of a new sort of era in Overwatch on the beach. And, and we have many more themes in there for the players to experience, which I'm sure John and your group, are, you guys just attack that, No, right? that, that's easy. That's easy. <laughs> no, we, uh, when we looked at it, it's, it's not just the themes, but the spaces in between, because as we go from one theme to the other, um, from a map creation standpoint, you don't want to have these themes just abutting right up next to one another. So there's, there's spaces between those often. And so that makes a much bigger map. Um, if you played Rio out on the floor, you'd notice that uh, it's bigger than any of the maps that we've done before, easily two times. And so when we look at that, it, there's a couple problems that come up. One is rendering. So if you're looking across the map, we, there's a lot more to render. And we want to limit that. We, we, we want to make sure that the, the, uh, we always keep the 60 FPS that, that, um, that we try to achieve on, on our recommended spec. So, um, so what we had to do was sort of do offline calculations of potentially visible set and give the, the artists new tools that would enable them to tell, help to tell us and tell the engine what, do, what can the player see at any given moment. And so we have to do that. But on top of that, there's just more themes. And again, that means more textures and more models. And suddenly, we can't fit everything into memory. So uh, a piece of technology that we're doing now is we're, we're going to be streaming in the map data so that we, for these big story missions, we can, we can have a player progress through it. Now, obviously, you're picking heroes at the beginning. So it's not as, as important that we support the, the hero switching, but we do need to support these really large maps and, and all these extra themes. Yeah, another thing that new, uh, new themes gave us to, um, an another challenge was like unit readability. Um, with Overwatch 2, because this is now a PvE and we, we don't have the, the red outlines that we have for PvP to rely on for, for a quick read, uh, with new themes, that means the same units, the same null sector uh, nullifiers that you're playing in, you know, uh, in, in Rio on the exterior are the same ones in the interior um, areas of, of the map. And those have totally different lighting conditions, different colors, different themes. How can we create enemies that pop and are readable within all of those themes. So we, we look to um, Torbjorn Malmer, one of our engineers on, on the Overwatch team, an actual Torbjorn. The engineer, Torbjorn. The yeah. Torbjorn. Um, he helped us out with some new technology that helped pop these characters out. You know, taking a little bit of the information around them and just boosting that light um, on those characters. And if you look at the, the nullifier on the screen here and those, those power generators beside them, those are actually the same color, but then with the with the lighting boost, it really helps the, the enemy units you know, pop out. An interesting note on, on the development of this uh, Rio de Janeiro experience. Um, originally, the entire map was at night. And uh, we have a, a, a little uh, video of this in a little bit. But the interesting thing is, as we were playing it, uh, on the art side, a lot of feedback and, and readability feedback is everything's blue. Yeah, what, Billy, what, it turns out that moonlight Bounces blue no, everywhere, no, no, so no, no, no. You, you everything job very good. well. And it's everything the engine was blue. working. The, the engine's working. working. <laughs> but we have then we were like, well, we we actually want not everything to be blue. We we would like a, a more of a thematic change. So we changed the out exterior light of Rio to this dawn, golden kind of feeling for the player to show this this hope in inside the map. And then we still kept the blue sort of tone inside the ominous ship, the ominous feeling. So we got kind of the best of both in there. Yeah, and uh, it, that really helped with the outdoor areas. But as, uh, as Arne um, mentioned, that we still had the units that were in the shadows that weren't reading as well. So we had to introduce this technology to sort of brighten those enemies up. Um, but that wasn't everything that we introduced. Obviously, a big thing that Billy talked about was having much more dynamic environments. And for us, that's something that, that's a little bit new, because when we set, that, set out to do original Overwatch, most of the maps there, we really saw them as PVP playgrounds from a gameplay standpoint. And 
because of that, we didn't really want to, to put a lot of distractions in there that would distract from that gameplay. Um, so most of the maps were static. We, we still had our options, our opportunities to tell a story through those maps, but in Overwatch 2, really those maps in the story missions, they're, they're a character in that story. So what we wanted to do was take that opportunity to do much more with the maps. And it's a great opportunity for us on the technical side, but one thing we don't do at Blizzard is we just don't do text for text's sake. So we want to explore, like, what are the opportunities to make the game better through that? Um, and there's a point just about every year, I think, where the team sort of takes a little bit of time to explore some of these out-of-the-box ideas and think, how can we advance our gameplay? How can we advance our technology? And it's usually a, a, a difficult time for engineers because the artists and designers are doing crazy things. What? So. John, come on. <laughs> so, uh, so we have to look at what they come up with, and, and usually they, they'll put a lot of crazy stuff together, and they'll say, look, it works in the engine. Let's just ship this. But, um, but it doesn't work on all the technologies that we support. So it means we have to take those ideas and sort of get them down to something that we can, we can support. And a great example of, um, of one of those um, efforts is uh, Lan Chang, who's a uh, principal technical artist on our team, had, had done a demo of, of what a dynamic world would look like. And what she, set, what she set out to do was, what would it look like if uh, we took um, that temple of Anubis with that, you know, it was one of our first maps. It was a fairly simple map, but let's throw a sandstorm at it. So this is the demo that she came up with. So it's a really temple of Anubis. That if you've played it, this is, uh, this is quite different. Um, obviously, if you were playing uh, multiplayer in here, uh, the, the enemy would be obscured in most of it. but. All of these uh, trees that are blowing, she actually created the trees using our cloth renderer. So um, she, she uh, threw a whole bunch of particles in there. She played around with fog. There's a lot of things that she was doing here, stretching the engine and trying to figure out, like, how could we make this environment much more dynamic? And it's these types of things that really push us forward from a look standpoint and also from an art standpoint. And it leads to a lot of different technologies that we've put in. Some of these have come, come in over the years. Um, like we had uh, weather systems that we just started to touch uh, with uh, Lijiang Tower. Um, you saw a little bit of rain in there. Um, but that's something that we're looking to explore much more in Overwatch 2. Um, another one would be some of the fog that, sh that, that it sh was inspired by the demo she put together. Um, and actually, that in the, the fog that she had, it inspired this sort of dynamic changing weather as you go from one end to the other in Storm Rising. And you may have noticed that the fog comes in and makes it makes a much more moody look. Um, but we're going to utilize that much more in, uh, in Overwatch 2. Um, and then we, if you played Rio out on the, on the floor, you notice that the lighting looks like, or I hope you noticed, or maybe you didn't, um, but, uh, but the lighting is much more improved there. And uh, we really want to get that feeling in the player of, of, uh, of you know, these, these new environments and and this new dawn in the case of uh, Rio. And in a portion of that map, there's also the portion where, uh, spoilers, uh, you destroy the core, and then the lighting changes everywhere, and that's another aspect of dynamic environment that we introduced. Um, on top of that, we have uh, in, uh, the cloth that she was using for the uh, trees, and so when we saw that much cloth in the environment, we knew we were going to have to improve the efficiency to allow for more cloth. We also wanted to improve the simulation as well. Um, I think this is one of Arn's favorite uh, screenshots here. Oh, yeah, my favorite slide. Any friends from Canada here today? <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, and then uh, if you played Rio, there's a lot more going on in that environment. We have explosions. We have a lot of particle effects. Again, something that we didn't really have the option to put into PvP because we want to keep that focus on the player versus player uh, concepts. But these are all opportunities when we're exploring how we can expand the art and how we can expand the engine uh, to, to add a whole bunch more to the environment. But beyond that, um, we have this, this, sh this uh, example from Rio of where we've pulled all that together. And you can kind of see like the particles and the, the trees using the cloth and all the additional effects. It's, uh, it's certainly led to a lot of changes within the engine. And so another way that we get the environment to be much more dynamic is, um, is through these things we like to call mission moments um, or, or sequenced events within the game. And uh, what we, we had a two-part two thing, a two-part consideration there, where um, if you've played Rio, you've noticed that we have an intro and an outro b before the mission. And for every mission that we have in the story missions, we're going to have that intro and that outro. And those are done within our game engine. 
Um, and so we wanted to provide tools to uh, the story and franchise group that would allow them to, to create these intros and outros uh, fairly efficiently. Um, but on top of that, we have these mission moments within the game um, that as you're going through, sort of convey much more of what's going on in the environment. So you might remember if you played through Rio, as you run around the corner, you see this uh, storefront that suddenly explodes and all of these uh, Omnix, or I'm sorry, all of these uh, null sector units drop down. And, um, and so what we'll talk about a little bit here is how that uh, came from inspiration and, and eventually ended up in the game. And what that came from originally was a, a piece of concept art done by the art team. Yeah, Peter Lee, our uh, principal concept artist on the team, he took the whole story that we wanted to tell uh, for Rio, the story mission, and he kind of illustrated these mission moments. Um, everything from beginning at Lucio's, um, Lucio's club all the way to you know, the, the Omnic uh, command ship, you know, he had illustrations for every single moment. And in, somewhere in the middle, he had this one illustration of this quaint little house, <laughs> this yeah. nice view of the Rio beach out there. And, you know, it'd be a shame if we... Blew it up. What? Yeah. Blow it up, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> so this really inspired the team to be like, okay, you know, this really gives the, the, the Rio a sense of destruction that it's under attack. Um, so it was really, really a defining moment in developing these um, mission moments. So let's take a look at a little bit behind the scenes. It's a short clip uh, at that stage in development of this, this sort of experience that the guys just described. Really early on. Boom. As you can also tell, here's the night version of, uh, of Rio at that time, too. So as, as Arn's group is working on the concepts and, and working with the designers and John's groups on the technology side, also Dion and his group um, are working on the environment. They're building the architecture. They're building the world itself. And for example, like in our team, we have people from all over the world on the team. So one of the things on, in the environment side is we want a believable world. We want a world that feels like, oh, it feels like Toronto or it could feel like Rio. We have a very talented concept artist, I mean, uh, environmental artist, Tiago Clafke, on our team from Brazil. And he, he owned the map on, on the modeling side. He's like, okay, guys, the, you know, the, the street has to look this way. And guys, look, in, in Brazil, we do it this way. So he really helped kind of flesh out this world and polish this encounter along with all the other groups. It was a lot of fun. I think he actually was the one who decided we. It wasn't going to just be a house. It had to actually expand to this storefront that looked much more like it belonged in Brazil. And so let's take a look at the actual final execution of that, which you guys can play on the show floor as well. Gosh! Took forever to get that record to roll down the street there. Every day we'd come in the office and go, Is the get record the record roll, roll down the street. <laughs> yes, Johnny. So that's a glimpse into how we've been evolving the art for Overwatch 2. We hope that you enjoyed it. Um, I mean, we're certainly excited to show it to you. I mean, one of the biggest things I'm excited about as a gamer is um, we've, we've wanted to, since the beginning, since we started on Overwatch, uh, we've wanted the ability to, to, to convey much more of the story in the environment. We've been very, I guess, jealous of, uh, of the cinematics team as they get to make all these cool story moments. And so, I'm pretty excited to, to get together with my friends and play through the story missions and play through the hero missions. I think for me, that's going to be a really exciting moment. Yeah, for me, as, as an artist who works on the characters, it's really exciting to take these characters that we know and love and see and challenge ourselves into how we push them to the next level, how we bring them to the next chapter of Overwatch. Um, as a player, I'm really excited about how we do the same thing for progression and you know, like Aaron and Jeff were talking about yesterday, showing all the cool new talents that heroes have, and just seeing how, all the different ways these heroes can express themselves to fulfill this new fantasy that we have for the heroes in Overwatch 2. I, I think another uh, passionate note, too, is that just building out the Overwatch universe, uh, just more experiences for the players, new places in the world to explore, just developing this whole new universe is so exciting for me and, and, and a lot of the team as well. Yeah, so we hope you guys enjoyed all the cool uh, the, the stuff that we showed today. Um, if you guys get a chance, please uh, check out our, our demo over on, in Hall A. And we're always looking for more feedback, so tell us, tell us what you think, and there's going to be a lot more to come. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Thank you for attending Overwatch, 
evolving the art. Up next, World of Warcraft Q&A.